Shalom, Most High in Christ. Bless. This is another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm your teacher for the day, Captain Yadin. And to my right, Officer Jeremiah. All praise to the Most High. So we're going to go ahead and get into it, right? So the topic for today, well, the 15 Minutes with the Captain, is going to be slothfulness. Slothfulness. We're going to go over slothfulness, right? What does the Bible say about slothfulness, right? So let's start off with Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 9. Let's start off right there. It's the book of Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 9. Go ahead. And at what instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom. So he's speaking concerning a nation and a kingdom. Read. To build. To do what? To build. Go ahead. And to plant it. So that's the job right now for us. For us right now, is our job is to establish a nation and a kingdom and to build and to plant. Building to plant what? The ideas, right? Uh, um, the ideas and the framework and the things that need to be done for us to build that nation, right? With us teaching, going and teaching God's laws, statutes, and commandments, giving the wisdom out of the Bible and things like that, right? That's our job, right? Read that one more time. Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 9. Go ahead. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. So that's our job, right? To build and to plant the things for us to be able to build a nation and a kingdom, right? But guess what? If you have that slothful, lazy spirit on you, we won't be able to do that, right? Go to Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Let's see what the Messiah himself commanded us to do when coming to build, building and planting for this nation and our kingdom. Read that. Luke chapter 14 and verse 23. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. So that's the job of a prophet, right? To go out to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Not to sit around and, and wait for the kingdom to come or wait for somebody else to do it, this person to do it, that person to do it. But Christ commanded us to go out to the highways and the hedges to compel our people to come into this truth, right? Now go to Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 13. I'm going to show you the problem with being a slothful man and why you won't be able to fulfill that if you are slothful. Read that. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 13. Go ahead. The slothful man saith, there is a lion without. It says there's a lion without. So when the job is, is to go out into the highways and hedges to teach the people. We know that we go out and we teach. It's warfare, right? We're dealing with our people. Sometimes our people are not happy. Sometimes the world's not happy. We deal with the other nations. Right. You never know what's going to go out there. But a slothful man says what? Read that again. The slothful man saith, there is a lion without as a lion without. Right. It's, it's some reason why I can't go out into the streets. I'm scared. I'm afraid. Right. Keep reading. I shall be slain in the streets. They scared. I'm going to be slain in the streets. He really not scared of being slain in the streets. He just slothful. Right. He's lazy. He making up. He finding an excuse to not be out there. Is that it on that? Go to Sirach chapter 10 and verse 18. So you can see how being slothful will make it so where you can't fulfill that commandment to go out into the highways and hedges. And if you don't go out into the highways and hedges, guess what we won't do? We won't build a kingdom and we won't establish a nation. Read that. So the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 10 and verse 18. Go ahead. Pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them that are born of a woman. Go ahead. They that fear the Lord are a sure seed, and they that love him an honorable plant. Sirach chapter 10, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. Ecclesiastes 10 and 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. Go ahead. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth, right? So in our um, mission to go out and establish a new nation, to establish a kingdom, to build and to plant, with that slothfulness, guess what's going to happen? Whenever we try and build, it's going to start to decay. He reading. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. And that's it. When you slothful, you don't want to go out. You say there's a line in the streets, right? You make any kind of excuse there is to not go out and build. Guess what? The house will be destroyed. We won't be able to build. Is that it on that scripture? Yes, sir. Go to um, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24. Because when we're thinking about a kingdom, when you think about a kingdom or a, building a nation and things like that, guess what? What goes into that? Rulership. Rulership. Somebody's going to be the ruling class and somebody else is going to be the serving class. Right. 
right? Read that scripture. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24. Go ahead. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. So guess what? If you are diligent, if you're not sloth, slothful, that's one of the opposites of slothful, being diligent. The hands of the diligent shall bear rule, meaning you're going to have authority. You're going to have rulership over the nations. You're going to have rulership over not just the nations, right? But guess what? We're going to have rulership within our own people. We're going to have our own laws, right? We're going to have uh, con dealing with the Bible. Somebody's going to have to enforce those things, right? Just like in today's days, right, you have a ruling class, and guess what? We are subject to payments, like the scriptures say. Hold that. Go to Baruch chapter 3, uh, verse 8 real quick. Baruch chapter 3, verse 8. Because within, because a lot of a lot of times with our people, we really don't understand what it's going to take to build a nation and to establish a new kingdom. Read that. Baruch chapter three and verse eight. Go ahead. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Guess what? If you're not bearing rule, guess what? You're a captive. That's what we are today. We're in captivity. Read. Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Read. And to be subject to payments. And to be subject to payments like now we're subject to payments the right. bills and the things we have to pay for our water we have to pay for uh pretty much if they could if, if they could find a way to make us pay to breathe they would do that right. right because they bear rule right now they have rulership over us so they establish the payments that we have to deal with like dealing with ta uh, taxes and tribute right. right now go back to where we was at go back to um proverbs 12 verse 24 read that Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24. Go ahead. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. So if you're diligent, you're going to bear rule. Read. But the slothful shall be under tribute. Be, be under what? Be under tribute. Be under tribute. That's going into what? Taxes, right? Like the scripture says, subject to payments, right? right? So when if we're slothful, we're never going to establish that kingdom. We're going to always be in the position that we're in right now. We're going to be captives, right? So now go to Right. So now go to Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse ten. Right. Dealing with well, we already dealt into building a nation. Right. Another thing that we commanded to do is this. Second Thessalonians chapter three and verse 10. Read that for me. Also, second Thessalonians chapter three and verse 10. Go ahead. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Guess what? If you don't work as a man, you won't be able to eat. That's thus saith the Lord. Right. So let's see how does that work with being slothful, because we know the diligent what they're going to rise up. They're going to go to work. Right. Going to get a job, things like that. They're going to do what the Lord commands them. But let's see about that slothful man. Go to uh, Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 25. Proverbs 21 and verse 25 real quick. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 25. Go ahead. The desire of the slothful killeth him. For his hands refuse to labor. Guess what? His hands refuse to labor, right? Like the scripture just said, if a man don't work, he shouldn't eat. Guess what? A slothful man, that's going to kill him. You know why? Because he's not going to be able to afford to take care of his household, his right. family, right? That's what it's going into. So to make sure we're able to, one, establish a nation and establish a new kingdom and also be able to survive where we're at, we have to work. But a slothful man, he don't want to work. Y'all know some slothful people, right? You got a brother that go from job to job to job to job. I, I like to call it the uh, the Harry Hippie Israelite. If you never heard that song before, just look it up, Harry Hippie, and just listen to it. That brother that don't want to work, he always got a story, he always got a tale. He's always got his hand out looking to get assistance, but he don't want to get out and do the work. Read that scripture one more time. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 25. Go ahead. The desire of the slothful killeth him. The desire of the slothful killeth him. Guess what he desired? To sleep, to hang out, right? To not get up and do um, what is commanded of him to do. Read. For his hands refuse to labor. His hands refuse to labor. How are you going to find somewhere to live? How he's going to eat? 
how he's going to buy, how he's going to get the chief things of life. He's not going to be able to do that because he's slothful and his hands don't want to labor. Uh, go to Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Romans 12, verse 11, right? In order for us to establish a kingdom, to build a nation, right? Guess what? Work has to be done. Read that real quick. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 11. Romans 12, 11. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. Go ahead. Not slothful in business. We can't be slothful in business, right? So we know one thing with us trying to establish a nation and establish a kingdom. Some of us going to have businesses. Everybody's not going to work for a company, but you, some of us going to have our own business. We got electricians, right? right? We got carpenters. We got truck drivers. Uh, we got, um, what's the thing with the women? The um, midwi midwives. We got all kinds of different things that people, um, personal job things that people have in the body, right? And a lot of times when you need something done, it's a lot better for me to be able to go to uh, Officer Jeremiah and say, Hey, I'm um, looking for somebody to take care of, to take care of that. He's like, oh, yeah, I do that, right? But guess what? We got to depend on each other for things like that. But the scripture says, read that one more time. Not slothful in business. We got to make sure you're not slothful in business, right? If you're slothful in business, like the scripture say, you can make you an enemy without cause, without cause. You have a brother at your house supposed to be doing a job. It take, it's supposed to take one day. It take three weeks. Right. You got your rib, your rib going. Hey, how long as long is going to take it to make an enemy without cause? We can't be slothful in business, not even just working for ourselves, but working for the nations. If you slothful in business, guess what? You show up late. You take 13 bathroom breaks. You hiding in the back. Guess what? You're going to lose your job and you won't be able to take care of your household. Keep reading. Not slothful in business. Go ahead. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Slothful, you got to see what that's saying. It's showing whenever they show being slothful in business, don't be slothful in business, but be fervent in spirit. It's like, you know, if you are slothful, then guess what? You ain't got no fire in your spirit. You're not going to be doing and pushing to do the work of the Lord. So that slothful spirit, guess what? We got to make sure we cast that away from us, right? Let's go to, um, let's see, go to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 9. Proverbs 18 and 9. Let's read that real quick. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 9. Go ahead. He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. It says if you slothful in your work, you are brother to him that's a great waster. It's like you um the same as you brothers to the Edomite, the other nation, the people that's trying to destroy us, right? If you slothful in your work, you working against the nation, right? You working against everything we're trying to build. We trying to build something up. You being slothful, guess what? You destroying that thing, all right? Go to Proverbs chapter 19, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 24. Now you know, as we stay in a lot of Proverbs scriptures and things like this, it's going into wisdom, going into wisdom. It's not wise to be slothful. Read that. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 24. Go ahead. A slothful man hideth his hand he in do, his bosom. He do what? Hideth his hand in his bosom. You ever notice when you're trying to do something, you always can notice that one brother that he'll act like he about to do something, but then he'll kind of fade away. Or he's looking at you like, ah, uh, hey, grab the signs. And he like, ah, uh, he go to grab a sign, but somebody else grab it. That brother like that. You will never be able to establish a nation that way. We'll never be able to build our kingdom that way. And brothers like that, according to the scripture, they shouldn't eat. Read it one more time. A slothful man hides his hand in his bosom. Go ahead. And will not so much as bring it to his mouth he, again. He won't even bring it to his mouth again, right? He's so lazy, he won't even eat, right? That slothfulness will destroy a nation, right? Now, now give, me, uh, give me Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 1. Go ahead. A good name is better than precious ointment. Guess what? A good name is better than precious ointment, right? And it's true, one thing, you got to be mindful of your name, right? What's associated with you? If you somebody see you, be like, oh, yeah, that's a real diligent brother right there. That's a diligent sister right there. But some brothers and sisters, guess what? Oh, yeah, he's slothful. That's just a slothful, right? Read that one more time. A good name is better than precious ointment. Go ahead. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. Now go to, a, uh, go to Sirach chapter 22. And we're going to read verse 1 and 2. Because definitely in this walk, you will never want slothful 
attached to your name, right? Read that, Sirach 22, verse 1. Ecclesiasticus chapter 22 and verse 1. Go ahead. A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone. A what? A filthy stone. If you, if you, if you, if you get called slothful or labeled as slothful, you're going to be compared to a filthy stone. You're a dirty rock in Israel. Read. And everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace. You don't want to hang around slothful people, right? When somebody's slothful walk in the room and want to start talking to you like, ah, here come this dude. What are you about to lie about today? Because all, the, all these spirits go together. Slothfulness, right? Lying, all those different things, they all go together, right? It said they will hiss at you. What, what, how are you going to do it, Jeremiah? <sighs> this dude, right? Keep reading. Verse 2, a slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. The filth of a dunghill. That's crap. That's defecation. Elephant poop. Say so you compare it to crap if you slothful. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to be around crap. You step in it. Guess what? It smell you. You smell your car up. You make it. You smear it in your house. You want to make sure you stay far, far away from a man or for a sister that's considered slothful. Is that it on that scripture? Yes, sir. Keep reading. Every man that takes it up will shake his hand. Hey, man, you touch that slothful brother just like you touch some poop. You let me get this off me, right? So you got to be. In this, in this truth, you got to make sure you're mindful about your name in this truth, and you never want to be labeled slothful, right? So dealing with slothfulness, guess what? We got to establish a nation. We got to build a kingdom. And to do those things, you're going to have to be diligent and not slothful in business, all right? So that's 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Yadin, and to my right. Officer Jeremiah. Shalom. Most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.